In the top end, there's big money to be made in Buffalo. And as we'll soon see, big money to be lost. It's a tough game. Trevor, you're beating around the bush. And you're telling lies. It takes a lot to upset Territorians, but at this remote station, tempers have reached boiling point. We're not in court. We're, we're, we're sitting here no, on Muddenberry okay. Station that's and that's you're rambling on like you, a you. pork chop. The big man is Jay Pendarvis, owner of the Mudgeonbury Abattoir. Facing him is Trevor Surplus from the Meat Workers Union. And you should see them when they really get going. They're not rumours. There are when people we sitting in the, the picket line down there who worked here more. And never, I can, I just can shut prove. up. One of us shut up and let the other one talk. You, go you talk. Listen. But first, this is what the fight is all about. 25 meat workers who bypassed the union and negotiated their own deal with their employer. A deal which the Arbitration Commission agrees is legal. They get the minimum award wage, but on top of that, the harder they work, the more they're paid. And as far as they're concerned, they're onto a good thing. We're all happy with what we get. We've got, a, sure. we've got award wages, we've got our holiday pay, 17.5%. Sick pay. Everything. We've got everything. We've got work under the Northern Territory Award. Let's talk about money. Yeah. Well, that's the whole issue, really. I think that's what they think we're not getting enough. And we think we're getting plenty. plenty. The Australian Meat Industries Employees Union has declared war on Mudgeonbury. And believe it or not, these are the frontline troops. They may not look all that impressive, but they've got some powerful friends. The Waterside Workers' Union, the Transport Workers' Union and the ACTU. To the picketers, the fight is about the future of Australian unionism. It was at stake is the very heart of what we are here working for in Australia. Not going back to 19, uh, or the early hundreds, the, eight, the days of the Eureka Stockade, this is 1985. The National Farmers Federation are not going to destroy what we've built up over 30 years, which our forefathers fought for. What do you think about the guys working inside there? They're scared and it hurts you to see guys from the coast stay down. That's what they are, the guys from down the coast stay bloody scabbing on these fellas from the territory. When you realise what's at stake here, it's not hard to understand why Jay Pendarvis is willing to fight. Mudgeonbury has multi-million dollar contracts to supply buffalo meat to Sweden, to Taiwan and to West Germany. And yet, for three months now, ever since those picket lines went up, not a single shipment of export meat has left this abattoir. And the reason? Well, government meat inspectors, whose job it is to clear meat for export, simply refused to cross the picket lines. As Jay Pendarvis will tell you, the union's action has pushed him to the brink of bankruptcy. We'll be very, very lucky to survive financially, even though we're getting outside help with our legal expenses. We've still got our operational expenses to look at, and we're covering those just barely by processing for the domestic market. But our real concern is that we've got about $5 million worth of export contracts. And those people could well sue us for breach of contract. You got a telex from Taiwan about the contracts? That's right, yeah, I did last week, Friday. Yeah. What did they have to say? Oh, they just wanted us to uh, advise when we were going to sh you know, start shipping our meat. Right. This season, Jay and Joy Pendarvis have had only one day of export production in three months. The picketers saw to that. The mistake the Pendarvises made was the simple idea that to make Buffalo pay, their workers needed a personal incentive scheme, not union rules. Have you faced fairly and squarely the possibility of a total shutdown of your place? Yes, um, if that was to happen, uh, we would be absolutely destitute and uh, it's not a very comfortable feeling. Do you think that they are trying to wipe you out? Well, I think that's fairly obvious, yes. You're the bunny? I'm the bunny. Oh, what went in there? Why? 
Big uh, one, man, big one. <laughs> Jay Pendarvis isn't exactly short of powerful friends himself. You don't often see the National Farmers Federation sharing a tinny with meat workers. We need a oh, yeah. Well, see, those guys came down here, and the idea was you're going to be on the pick of the line for a fortnight, you go back to Catherine, you've got a good job. Yeah, well, Paul Houlihan is the Federation's industrial officer. They're backing Jay Pendarvis, no matter how much it costs. I just want to say very briefly how much we appreciate the fact that you people have stuck to your guns. Because if we don't win this fight, I'm sorry, there's not going to be a meat processing industry. You're never going to work in the meat industry in four or five years' time because she's all gone. Again, thank you all very much. The Federation believes that what's at stake at Mudgeonbury is the future of the Australian meat industry. They don't just want victory, they want blood. We want every dollar that Pendarvis has lost and that his employees have lost paid up. So we're after full damages. Now, the ACTU's got to be concerned about that. What kind of money are you talking about? We could be talking around $2 million. 14 court cases have failed to solve Mudgeonbury's problems. And a meeting between the union and Jay Pendarvis showed just how far apart they are. Morning, Trav. How are you Would you like to come in? The union's room? Northern Territory organiser is Trevor Surplus. Right. But this is the last round, is it? Well, I don't know. That's probably up to you. Now, you fellows are really concerned about productivity. You don't want people to work to earn the money that they are paid. And that's what it really boils down to. You want to take 50 blokes to do 100 animals and cost the processing company and the producer fortunes when productivity is really what it's all about. Now these fellows are earning between 750 on minimum kills to over $1,000 on maximum kills per week. Now you tell me that's a cut in wage? What's uh, the average wage of an Australian meat worker today? On a six day week, a woman packer, gross under $820 one week. The facts and figures fly, but the argument boils down to this. Under the Pendava system, workers negotiate their own bonuses. Under the union tally system, the union fixes the rate. This means that in a normal day, the people at Mudgeonbury work hard, but earn a lot more. We're really getting away from the context of this argument. The context of this argument is that we had a federal award handed down by a full bench to the Northern Territory. The union agreed to accept that award. Why don't you abide by the And you did not. Well, why don't you abide You did not. One day's production, and then up goes the picket line. We are abiding by an award. You've been ripping workers off for years. <laughs> Any time you pay a man $1,750 to $1,000 well, a week for how much work and is he rip doing? him off? Of course, if you look, every one of those If you do $3,000, if I do $3,000 worth of work, I want $3,000. If I do $20 worth of work, I want $20. No, I'm not you gonna better rephrase that. Worth you want $2,000 for, for, for $500 worth of effort. It's Bullshit. not work, it's effort. We would have the best communication with workers and management I've ever seen in any meat works, and I've been in with a few. Um, it's no problem to Jay to sit down and talk to any of us about any problem whatsoever. Example of that, like we were down the smoko room just four days ago. We had a couple of little, you know, bitches, you know. We had a little, you know, bitch over money too. Mm -hmm. And everything we asked, we got. Right. And everybody gets on fine, you know. We enjoy it. You just have a good time, work, save a few yeah, dollars, a and beer. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> then go back down south, have a holiday and get pissed. <laughs> We're all grown men, mate, yeah. and we can, we can act that. We're right. used to... Remember, the arrangement you know? between these workers and Jay Pendarvis the has the approval of the Arbitration Commission. It's legal. Therefore, these men are picketing illegally, and they're supported in that action by the ACTU. Now, you may wonder how the ACTU can support an illegal picket. The reasonable assumption would have been that the union should have been involved. Because of the circumstances at Mudgeonbury, that's not been the case. Vice President Simon Crean has an explanation. See if you can follow this one. The bottom line is that the ACTU, you, are sanctioning an illegal picket line. Now, how can you do that and save face? Because it has been declared illegal 
by a piece of legislation that we don't believe should exist. So you're refusing to abide by the umpire's decision, in other words? No, because the umpire, in terms of the federal court, has not even been capable of coming to grips with the merits of the dispute. Do you think it's just possible that the union has become redundant as far as what's happened in Mudgeonbury is concerned? No, I don't think so. The workers are happy, productivity is high, wages are very high. But he what's can't export the meat. He can't export the meat because there is a picket. Precisely. And because then you one... are preventing, and union action is picket? preventing inspectors from checking that meat for export. But do you think that we just simply wake up in the morning decide that someone up there's done a nice cosy little deal that we don't like so therefore we're just going to whack a picket line on? Do you really believe that the trade union movement is naive as that? What is the point of those pickets? What will they achieve? The point of the picket is to demonstrate that that which has been arrived at by way of an agreement has been done bypassing the union and posing a threat to the rates and conditions elsewhere within the industry. The picketers have sat here for about a hundred days now. It's only one kilometre up the road to Mudgeonbury, but a solution seems a million miles away. We'll continue the picket line, we'll maintain the dispute, and we will win.